Let's get started with breakout rooms in Microsoft Teams. So to open breakout rooms, click on the breakout room icon in your main menu. There you'll have the option to select the number of rooms you'd like to create and also whether you would like to assign participants automatically or manually. So to start with, we'll assign participants automatically and we'll just wait for our rooms to be created. As you can see here in the panel on the right hand side, all participants have been assigned to breakout rooms one and two, and you can see the number of participants in brackets next to the room name. To restart and recreate rooms from scratch, click on the ellipses next to breakout rooms and recreate rooms. So we'll head back to the main menu now and recreate our rooms. This time we're doing them manually um, and again, we're creating two rooms. So click create rooms and we'll return to our main meeting. As you can see in the panel on the right hand side, our participants are yet to be assigned. They are in the unassigned list. To assign participants, click on the drop down next to assign participants. Select the names of the participants you would like to assign and then cl click on which room you would like to assign them to. It's also possible to add new rooms to the existing room list. As you can see here, we're adding an additional room which will appear under room two and you can see it has zero participants assigned to it. It's also possible to rename a room by clicking on the ellipses next to the room or hovering over where it currently says closed and then typing in the, the new name of the room. So we'll continue to rename all three rooms. To view room participants, click on the drop down next to the room. Here you can select participants and assign them to different rooms or move them back to the unassigned participant list, which means that they will stay in the main meeting once you send everybody else to breakout rooms. It's also possible to delete rooms by clicking on the same ellipses to open the options next to the room. Deleting a room with participants inside it will mean that they return to the unassigned list and you will either need to leave them in the main meeting or reassign them to a different room. Clicking on the ellipses next to breakout rooms opens a further options menu for room settings. One of these options is to let people go back to the main meeting. This means that when you open breakout rooms, if you tick this box, Participants can leave their breakout room and return to the main meeting to, for example, ask you a question without interrupting the breakout room discussion. From here, you can also choose to automatically move people into opened rooms. This means that when you start breakout rooms, participants will automatically be sent to the rooms. The alternative is that a pop-up will appear asking if they would like to move to the room and if they decline, they will stay in the main room. To open breakout rooms, you can either click to open individual rooms or click to start rooms, which will open all breakout rooms. Once you click to start rooms, participants will move to their breakout rooms and you will stay in the main meeting along with any participants who are unassigned or whose rooms you have not yet opened. You can then move freely between each of the breakout rooms as meeting organiser. Once you've clicked to join a breakout room, the room will open in a new meeting window. Meeting options are much the same as in a normal meeting with a chat, files, a whiteboard and meeting notes. As meeting organiser, you also have permission to record inside the breakout room. This is not possible for participants, but the recording will be available to them once the meeting is over in the chat to download. 
the recording will continue once you leave a breakout room to go into a different room and the recording will only be available to the participants of that specific breakout room. To leave a breakout room, click to leave the meeting and then you can exit the call window. The main meeting will be on hold, but you can go back here to manage the breakout rooms and do things like make an announcement to all rooms. To rejoin the main meeting, click to resume the call. Only you and any unassigned participants will be in the main meeting room until you close breakout rooms. Clicking to close individual rooms or close all rooms will bring all participants back into the main meeting room with a slight delay um, to give them some time to finish their conversations. As you can see here, a participant in breakout room blue has sent a message in the chat. This is visible to all breakout room blue participants and also you as the meeting organizer, and you can communicate with all breakout rooms through the chat function without having to join the room. As you can see on the dashboard, the breakout rooms are still there and available if you would like to resend participants to the same rooms. You can also reassign participants to new rooms or alternatively start from scratch by recreating rooms by clicking on the ellipses at the top of the screen. Following the meeting, participants in each breakout room will be able to view the chat, meeting notes, whiteboard and files for their breakout room in their Teams chat area. This is also where the recording will appear and you can see that announcements made during the breakout rooms appear as important with an exclamation mark. 